Today, we're gonna take a stab at redesigning the Nike Run app. And then my wife uses this all the time to go on long runs, prepping for marathons. And every time I see her use it, I cringe a little inside. Despite Nike being one of the biggest companies in the world, the user experience of their running app could use some work. So here we're looking at the app. And as you can see, some of these screens are very intuitive. When I'm trying to start a run, I'm given a secondary navigation where I have to first look at existing runs and then click a navigation link to start a run. Very unintuitive. As usual, most of the screens have lots of big content blocks that aren't necessarily relevant to the user. And then when I try to start a run, I'm given lots of confusing options. Of what do these icons mean specifically? And then when I'm actually doing the run, I'm, I'm given this screen, which is okay. I mean, it gives me the relevant details that I want, but there's so much more that I could put in here. Um, more meaningful information, as well as an overview of where I am located in the physical world. So gonna take a stab at redesigning it and see what we come up with. Here's the style guide as always. We're bumping them over to DM Sans, a nice modern font that looks really good in uppercase. That'll be great for labeling things later on. And then of course, here's the stories, the things we want to achieve with a UI like this. Just start a new run, uh, specify the shoes you're wearing uh, so you can track wear and tear on the shoes. It's a very Nike specific thing, of course. And then I want to view live feedback about my run and see my past run history, account settings, things like that. Let's just get in there and see what we come up with. Almost every time a user opens this app, they're probably about to go on a run. So we really need to emphasize the new run experience somehow. And I'm experimenting with showing a floating button here because I think they're cool looking and I just wanted to try it out a little bit. Eventually we simplify this significantly, but really want to emphasize that it's so important that we pull attention to this main flow here uh, because if there is a very singular thing that users tend to do in an app, making it obvious and easy for them to do is almost always a, a big win for the user. ultimately decided that in order to have that floating button, the navigation ended up taking up way too much vertical real estate. So we're moving the link in line, but then maintaining that blue accent so it clearly pulls your attention uh, without taking up too much space. Creating the individual run card here was actually quite a challenge. I started by asking my wife what sorts of information is relevant to her when she's trying to look through her run history. And she gave me a genuine information hierarchy that was a good starting place. But eventually I had to like heavily reference other apps where I looked at things like Strava, uh, the Adidas running app to figure out how you can organize this metadata in a way that's useful to the user. And I want to stress that it's almost always a good idea to just lean heavily on an existing app UI as opposed to coming up with something completely net new yourself. You run a lot of risks doing this because you could potentially completely throw the user off and if there's already an established pattern for arranging information in a certain way, um, there's really no reason not to. Uh, there's no sense in reinventing a car, for example, and completely changing the whole interface, moving the steering wheel around and the pedals, uh, when people already generally understand where things are supposed to go. In the existing UI, the account menu was in the upper left, but there is established affordance, as we just talked about, for putting the user menu in the upper right. So we're just gonna move that there and then add a dedicated settings menu in the navigation controls below instead. Unfortunately, I lost quite a lot of footage here, but what you're seeing is me coming up with a UI that is, I think, the best of both worlds. It's simple and elegant, yet still informative. And we have a nice little icon on the left wrapped in a gray box to both give the user an understanding that this is part of the individual card that it's in and some sort of visual break from all of the text. And we can, of course, use a running icon here or just a map overview of the area that they ran if they choose to share that information.
Now, creating the new run flow here, we have to do two things. Give the user a way to configure the run they've just created and then give them a way to monitor their run in real time. So we're designing the first of those two screens now and letting the user do some quick setups before they get going. I was really torn for a while as to what sort of metadata might be relevant to a runner while they're actually running. And after talking this over with my wife, we concluded that um, the total distance, the current pace, and then perhaps calories burned so far would be the most relevant metrics to track. Of course, we could also show average pace, but that's really only relevant for runners once they've completed and they're reviewing their run. When a user is getting ready to start their run, there's probably a couple of actions that they want to complete. So building out a little quick actions component here to let users uh, make small changes to the configuration, not necessarily change all the settings, but just little tweaks here and there to prepare them for their run. Now, given that the start run and the finish run buttons occupy the same space on the screen, but just in different contexts, it could be the case that users might accidentally click start run twice and then automatically finish their run. So it makes sense to give them a lock option that they can toggle on and off that will disable the, the clicking of that button until it's unlocked. So we don't have to give users a confirmation modal or anything. Uh, we can just assume that if they have unlocked that button and then clicked it, that they are sure they want to finish their run. So this way we get around a lot of user experience problems that could pop up in this UI. And finally, although I would probably recommend removing this, <laughs> given that it is Nike's app, they're probably gonna insist that users select their shoe before they start running. And if we're gonna do that, uh, having a very quick modal that po pops up right before they start a run uh, that lets them either select a shoe option or specify that they just don't wanna track for this run, um, I think is the easiest way of solving that problem without impacting the user too much. All right, there we go. I feel like we've arrived at a UI that does everything that I would want it to do in a much better way. Uh, so here, a really simple activity overview that gives me all the relevant metadata about my individual runs. We've got some achievements and things like that. I can bookmark runs to look back at them later if I'm particularly proud of a particular split or something. Um, I can filter quickly between all and bookmarked or just search through activity if I'm looking for something specific. Additionally, if I do want to start a run, I'd be hit with a modal like this that just immediately asks me if I want to start tracking my wear on my shoes or if I just don't want to do that at all. Really easy to do. There's no ambiguous iconography anymore. And then when I get going, I'm given some more options to configure things, but more than likely users will probably just want to start the run. And when they do, they're taken to an interface where they can see their live location as well as when they're done unlock the controls here and then finish the run to see an overview. So this is how I would reimagine the Nike Run app, uh, but let me know what you think. Is there something missing from this UI? Is there, am I doing a little too much, too little? I'd appreciate any feedback I can get, particularly from any runners out there in the wild. But hope this one was useful for you folks. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.